So today I want to talk a little bit about um, a couple of common mistakes people make in their chest wall handstand. They're very common, but they're also very subtle. So if you don't have an experienced eye or you're not sure what you're looking at, it's very easy to miss a couple of details that could actually hinder you from your freestanding handstand. Or if not hinder, then build a couple of bad habits that you don't really want when you're free balancing. So the first one is the distance from the wall. Right? When you're first learning this exercise, and the reason I'm talking about the chest wall is that it's very accessible, right? It's still a, a very beginner exercise. So a lot of people are doing it, and a lot of people could be doing it better. Um, and I see this in my own class, in my own workshops, and other people's classes, uh, photos posted on the internet. I see this everywhere, so it is very common. I just want to address these two uh, these two fine issues. So distance from the wall, right? Ideally, chest to wall, we want to get as close as possible, right? Well, it's true up to a certain point, and then there's a point where if you get too close, it's actually hindering you. So every cue is good um, up to a point, and then it's possible to take it too far. So a lot of this depends on body type. With my own body type, I'm a little bit barrel chested, so if I have my open shoulders, and I have my ribs in, which are the cues I teach, my chest is still pretty far out of the way, right? So if I get too close to the wall, I actually have to break my line in order to hold the shape. So watch what happens, right? My normal chest to wall handstand, I'm gonna be about a couple centimeters away from the wall. So this is where I can have my arms vertical and I can have a nice line. Now if I get too close, I actually have not only is it more difficult to hold, but if I did want to hold it for longer, I would actually have to break my shoulders and planche a little bit just to hold that position. So now, when I do this, I'm no longer working the vertical arm position that I want in order to have a resting base for my handstand. So, again, it's not for everyone. If you have a very thin profile, it allows you to get closer to the wall, but closer is better up to a point, at which point it's no longer better. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So the next thing I want to talk about is the head position. And you hear this cue in Schitt's Gymnastics a lot, where they say, you know, pull the head in, ears to shoulders, all of that. I don't think the ears to shoulders cue is a good one, because look what happens. I can be at 45 degrees, and I can still touch my ears to my shoulders. So the cue you want to be able to cue shoulders open and ribs in so that the arms and the midsection create a straight line. So what ends up happening with the head in, especially in the chest wall, is that the head position can actually prevent uh, the good handstand position. So watch what happens. When I pull my head in, it allows me to close my shoulders, and even though it feels like I'm more open, a lot of people actually lean into their shoulders like this when they do it. When I pull the head in, I actually take away the space for me to open my shoulders further. So the cue that I propose and the cue that I normally teach when I do this drill is to try to get the upper chest to the wall. In this case, the head actually needs to come out a little bit to create that clearance. So I'm going to have the neck in a slight extension, and that allows me to use my shoulders to pull the chest into the wall. So as opposed to this, where I can't go further, I'm going to pull the head out and then do this. You see the difference? I'm pulling the upper chest to the wall, and that allows me to create a much straighter line. Not only that, is that when I'm actually free balancing, I do want to look at the floor in terms of orientation. So I hope this cue is helpful, and uh, hopefully it progresses you further along your journey.